This, of course, is a computer animation of the Boeing Starliner's abort system being tested, and yes, it actually has really been tested as opposed to any sort of computer-generated images, but the reason I'm showing this is because perhaps this should stay in the realm of CGI. That is to say, Boeing should never really carry astronauts into orbit, and that became even more apparent today when it was announced that Boeing had lost $900 million, or rather had endured $900 million worth of charges as a result of all of the ongoing failures on the Starliner project. And here's the problem. Starliner doesn't have the luxury of going over budget the way SLS does. This is a fixed price contract that's never going to be able to turn a profit. And if it's never going to be able to turn a profit, can it ever really be safe? Hello YouTube, I'm the Angry Astronaut and this is... So even though in a recent article, or advertisement shall we say, where Boeing is announcing that everything is hunky-dory with Starliner and it's going to advance the future of human spaceflight, in a filing with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission shortly after I released a reaction video about Starliner, they announced a charge of $195 million, which was recorded in Boeing's fiscal third quarter, and this of course was blamed on Starliner, and it comes after after a $93 million charge reported in the second quarter financial results in July 27th. So what this comes to is $883 million dating back to early 2020 when the company took a $410 million charge after a first uncrewed test flight called Orbital Flight Test or OFT was cut short by technical problems and all of us know how that went. And ever since then, things have continued to go badly. But what I'd like to focus on is what went badly during this last flight, because really not much has been talked about with that particular flight, that supposedly successful flight, and there were three major things that took place. The first of which was a failure of a maneuvering thruster during orbital ascent, and then a failure of the backup thruster, these were OMAC thrusters by the way, until finally a third thruster functioned properly about 30 minutes after liftoff. And then after that, a ring responsible for latching onto the station failed to deploy in the correct manner, causing Starliner to miss its scheduled contact time by over an hour. And then, shortly after touchdown, the recovery team detected hydrazine vapor, a flammable oily liquid that's dangerous to inhale. Lots and lots of problems in this supposedly successful flight. Now, what you're watching right now is, of course, a depiction of Atlas V carrying Starliner into orbit, and you're going to see an important detail here, something that I've mentioned a number of times in the past. The Centaur upper stage is customized with an aerodynamic skirt, and this isn't to provide additional aerodynamic performance to an already solid vehicle. This is to provide the necessary aerodynamic performance that ULA regards as safe for this spacecraft because all of the tests in the wind tunnel indicated that Starliner was not a very stable vehicle and that's why this aerodynamic skirt was added to the Centaur upper stage. In addition to that, you will notice that Starliner is taking a very shallow ascent vector. The reason for this is if there's some sort of problem during ascent, it can abort under emergency circumstances and re-enter the atmosphere something that usually isn't necessary. They don't do it with the Soyuz, they don't do it with Crew Dragon, but they do with this. By the way, there it is, the aerodynamic skirt falling away from the Centaur upper stage. That's what provides Starliner with the necessary aerodynamic capabilities to be safe in the first place. And by the way, these are basic design issues, not taking into account everything that's happened as of late. So if you take all of these other factors into account, the thruster failures, the hydrazine, etc., one would think that this last flight really wasn't quite good enough to put astronauts in danger next time. 
But here's the problem. Boeing can't afford another test flight. Hell, they couldn't even really afford this one. They're already running way in the red, and it's just getting worse. And they're blaming these charges on post-certification missions and the schedule of these missions. Quote, the increase recorded in the third quarter of 2022 was primarily driven by timing of the three future post-certification missions, which are now assumed to be completed by 2000. 2026 based on NASA's revised launch plans. We had previously assumed that the post-certification missions would be completed by 2024. Well, yeah, they would have been if the damn ship had performed correctly the first time or the second time, or maybe even the third time. And of course, here's the problem. Now that Boeing is running so far in the red and that this spacecraft will never, ever be profitable, how much money can they really afford to invest in making sure that this spacecraft is safe given all the problems it's already experienced? And with these new charges, the problem is getting even worse. In my opinion, NASA should cancel Starliner immediately and invest more money in getting Dream Chaser human rated as quickly as possible because we do need an alternative to Crew Dragon and we do need another vessel capable of ISS reboost but I kind of doubt that's going to happen and the first human flight of Starliner is now scheduled for February of 2023. Please consider checking out my Saxivord videos linked at the end of this one, a program that isn't running almost a billion dollars over budget. And also, please like, please subscribe, and check the description for various ways for me to keep this content coming. And as always, stay angry about space!